What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff, and for you today, I'm going to be grading Ari Amira ProRes 4444 footage for the first time ever. I have no idea what's going to happen, I mean I'm really used to grading Sony S-Log, it could be a complete disaster, but I'm really excited to see what happens. Let's do it. <laughs> Of course, if you enjoy this free and unsponsored content, please be sure to like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. Thank you kindly. Before we dive in, I've just got a little bit of geekiness to get through before we start our grade. A question that a lot of people have is what does 444 footage mean when compared to the standard 420 footage you get in consumer cameras? Well, to put it simply, with standard 420 video, for every group of four horizontal to two vertical pixels, it records color from two from the top row and zero from the second row. Your camera fills in the blanks, so you can see just how lossy this format is. With 444, every single pixel in that 4x2 pixel grid records its own unique colour information. So as you can imagine, there's a huge difference in quality. I mean, if you're publishing to YouTube, you're probably okay with 420, but if you're doing high-end, you're gonna want that extra information. The footage I'll be grading is from the amazing Ari Amira camera, which I see as being sort of an ultra high-end run-and-gun style camera for especially good for documentary filmmaking, and I know for a fact it's been used on the BBC Planet Earth series, which if you haven't seen it, it just has some of the most jaw-dropping images. All the clips you'll see here were shot in 3.2K, and this video will be published in 4K. Why only 3.2K, I hear you ask? Well, for for ages now, it seems like Ari have prioritised a beautiful image over resolution. You know, 8K video, etc. that's Red's territory. Last thing before diving in, I just wanted to say a special thanks to my friend Joel in Australia for shooting these clips and sending them over to me. Sending Ari footage online is no joke, so I really, really appreciate that. Joel, of course, is the brains behind my favourite lookup tables, the Phantom Ari Look Lutz. And with his tireless hard work of comparing gamma curves and matching colours, plus the fact he's uh, he is an Ari Amira owner, that's how he was able to get such amazing looking lookup tables. They're the lookup tables I use the most, and of course this video was graded with the Utopia LUT. Here's the before, here's the after. They're linked below, definitely check them out. I previewed the footage in Finder to begin with, and despite it being shot in Ari Log C, it still looks beautiful, albeit typically flat. Otherwise clean, smooth and rich looking, and honestly footage that you can tell is going to be a joy to colour grade, and should look amazing once it's done. The first thing I noticed when I dropped the footage into my editing software, in this case it was Final Cut Pro, was that it displays with the built-in Log C at LUT applied, so colour and a contrast curve was applied. And honestly, not in the most pleasing way. This is the default setting for Final Cut Pro, so if you import your footage and then just simply render it down, that's the look you're going to get. I suppose it's for people who want a super fast workflow, but for me, I want to see that amazing log footage and grade it myself. So what you need to do is select the clip, come up into the Info tab, and then in this drop-down, select Settings, and then where it says Camera LUT, select None. Right, now we're set up, I'm going to get stuck into Final Cut and start grading. Okay, so here we go. The first thing I'm going to do is add an adjustment layer because I don't want to apply effects and grading to the clip itself. Next, I'm going to come up and I'm going to add an instance of color wheels. That's the first place I start with almost every single grade. I'm also going to open up my video scopes and really the best option for seeing what's going on in our footage is to use waveforms. And here you can see this shot was exposed nice and brightly. You can see that lovely log footage just bunched in the middle with absolutely no compression going on in our highlights or shadows. All I'm going to do for now is just bring the exposure down just a tad. Don't worry, I'll be coming back to this. This is a really dynamic shot and I really want to show off that dynamic range. Next, I'm going to add an instance of custom lookup table, which of course is Final Cut's inbuilt lookup table plugin. And I couldn't help myself, I just had to try a few lookup tables on this just to see what would happen. But in the end, I want a really natural look to this shot, so I went for Joel's own Phantom Lutz neutral lookup table. Instantly, I can see this was a really good choice. It's a really good lookup table for bold primary colours and good looking skin tones. At this point, I noticed something that could be a challenge. Obviously, this is a super hot day. The sun is shining down on the grass and the grass is reflecting 
a kind of green coloured light up into our subject's face. This might give the impression of a slightly more green skin tone and that's not what I want obviously, so it's something that I might look at in a bit. Next I'm going to bring the exposure down a little more, now that I've got the look at table in place I can see it's still a bit overexposed. I want to bring out the colours a little bit more from this shot, so I'm just going to give a small boost to the mid-tone saturation. Next I'm going to add an instance of colour curves and I'm going to place it before our lookup table. This means we'll be affecting the curves that go into our lookup table. I'm just doing this for now and I will show you the difference between adding it before and after in a bit. If you've seen my video about how to use colour curves then you'll know that I like adding lots of control points because it gives you lots of control. I'll link that video below if you're interested but basically all I'm doing is I'm tweaking the control points whilst keeping one eye on our footage and one eye on the waveforms and I'll be asking myself two things. One, am I maximising the dynamic range of the shot? And two, what looks better? As promised, I'm going to show you what happens when you add an instance of colour curves after your lookup table. You're affecting the final output of your video, so this makes a big, big difference. Effectively, I'm doing the same things before. I'm looking at the waveform, I'm looking at the footage, but really what I want to achieve here is to maximise that dynamic range. I want the shadows to reach almost the bottom and the highlights to reach almost the top of our waveform. The very last thing I want to do is just to check the situation with the green glare from the grass hitting our subject's face. So all I'm going to do is grab a shape mask and isolate the subject's face and then I'm going to switch from waveform to vector scope. This way we can check that our skin tone line is facing roughly in the right direction. To me it looks like it's leaning a tiny bit to the green, no surprise there. So back in our colour wheels I'm going to grab the mid-tones colour wheel and just nudge it slightly towards the purple. And that is basically it. Let me show you the before and after now. Here's that gorgeous looking Arri log footage. And then with the basic grade, this looks so lovely. Ready for another grade? Let's do it. I've chosen this clip for our second grade and it's just a really simple shot, rack focusing from a flower to the background. Remember all these shots were shot by Joel in isolation, so he's not going out and shooting these cinematic shots, these are just shot from his backyard. Final Cut Pro has applied that Log C lookup table, and actually in this case it looks pretty good, I'm actually quite happy with the colours, it's nice and punchy, however I am going to turn it off because I still want to grade it myself. In this clip it looks like the exposure has been absolutely nailed, so I've got my colour wheels in place but I'm not going to touch the exposure. Instead I'm going to jump straight into adding my lookup table and I'm going to use the same one I used before because I really like the way it looked so natural. Instantly the colours look great, I could probably do with it being a bit more punchy both in terms of saturation and contrast, so I'm going to add a tiny bit of saturation for now and then I'm going to go on and add some curves. As before I'm going to add lots of control points, all I want to do here is just add a little bit more oomph, a bit more of that kind of 3D look, so whatever I do with the curves it's going to be subtle. There's no secret formula here, all I'm doing is just tweaking the points to see what looks better. All of these tweaks though they do add up to quite a surprising result. As you can see here with the curves off on the left and turned on on the right. Seriously my video about curves, watch it, it's really good. The last thing I want to do is just to give it that final little bit of pop and to do that I'm going to just boost the saturation a tiny bit more in the midtones and just bring down our shadows just a tiny bit more. I just want the shot looking that much more dynamic. So here's our original 12-bit log and then once I add the grade you can see it just looks beautiful. I especially love that you can see so much detail in the sky with those wispy clouds. I just hope that you can see this once it's gone through YouTube processing. Whilst I was so impressed with the quality of the footage it wasn't quite the experience I was expecting. I think I was expecting to be able to manipulate the contrast curve in a more aggressive way but then I've got to keep in mind that this is not raw footage, this is Aria Mira ProRes. The difference being that with this 4444 footage we're getting that massive colour information and the better dynamic range latitude than I'm used to with my 8-bit footage but not the amazing ridiculous flexibility you get with RAW. So it's plain to see why the Aria Mira is such a great camera. You get such flattering and accurate colour and the dynamic range you get with the Arri Log C profile is just wonderful and it's so nice to grade. Arri Log C doesn't seem quite as flat a profile as some log profiles but I'd say if you're used to grading S Log 2 or 3 I think you'll find Log C so much easier to grade and you'll definitely prefer it, but I think that's probably an achingly obvious thing to say. Anyway, if you've got experience of grading this sort of footage, definitely get it in the comments section below. Let's load it up with tips and information, and let's all learn that way we all win. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Of course, I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this top one for you, and the one below is my latest upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Yeah.